If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Greetings and welcome once again to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, your host, and I want to thank you for being with me here today. I'm the director of Christian Answers, a Christian apologetics organization. In case you don't know what apologetics is, it means to defend the Christian faith. It doesn't mean we're apologizing for anything. It just simply means that we, as Christians, defend our faith against those who would come against it and say basically, you're wrong, and your religion's no good, and all that type of thing. Well, I as a uh, Christian apologist uh, believe that my faith uh, is worthy of defense, and that it's not just a blind leap of faith or anything like that, and I believe the Christian religion is the true religion, and is worthy to be defended, and I believe uh, by the facts and evidences provided by archaeology, history, prophetic utterances of the Bible, uh, the manuscript evidence of the Scripture itself, the, the Bible and the Christian faith stands where in comparison almost all other, other religions crumble uh, completely. And uh, basically, let me uh, shift gears a little bit and explain what uh, the topic of today's program will be. And that topic is going to be on Islam. But uh, basically, this show is geared more uh, not for uh, Muslims, let's say, who may be watching, although I'm sure there will be some Muslims watching. Uh, but it's meant mainly for Christians, people who have been saved by the blood of Christ, believe in His bodily resurrection, and uh, who know themselves to be redeemed and going to heaven one day to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. This show is, is meant for you brothers and sisters out there who will find yourself out in the marketplace of ideas, whether it be on a college campus or at your workplace or wherever it might be. This show uh, is geared for those of you who are going to run into the people of other faiths, other religions, and so forth. Particularly in this case, we're talking about uh, Muslims, Islamic people, people that you will run into in your workplace that uh, you'll have to deal with one way or another when it comes to the contrast between the Islamic religion and Christianity. And uh, if you run into some uh, very fundamentalistic type uh, Muslims or people who really take their faith seriously, and I do have to interject at this point that many people who are Islamic or Muslim are just like many people who call themselves Christians. They're very nominal. I've dealt with a lot of nominal uh, Muslims, just like I have dealt with many no nominal Christians. You have these people that really don't know what the Bible says, or in this case, the nominal Muslim, he doesn't really know much about what the Quran says. He doesn't spend a whole lot of time reading it. He's more secular than he is Muslim, but uh, still he claims to be a Muslim. Uh, after all, his parents were, and so he is, just like a lot of Christians. Well, I was born Christian, so you know I, I believe it, but they don't really spend time reading the Bible or anything else. So what you'll find in a lot of cases or people who have a, a Islamic belief really don't base it on having studied their own religion to any degree at all. Much like a lot of Christians, as I was saying, or people of other religions. They're, you know, people get lazy when it comes to religion. But now, if you're running into people who really take their religion seriously and really know a lot about it, uh, you know, that can be a, a, a real challenge in your, your workplace or wherever you happen to run into people like this. Your more nominal types aren't going to be that much of a threat. They're not going to be that much of a threat to you because they don't know that much about their own religion. 
to even talk about it. So uh, those are the kind of people that are very good to witness to f for your Christian faith. Because one thing you have to know in Christianity is you got to know why you believe and what you believe. And this type of program is meant for you Christians who can reach out to those Muslim neighbors or Islamic friends that you have and, and share with them your faith in an effective way that might just lead them to Christ, leave the Islamic faith and come to the Lord Jesus Christ so they might be saved. And as I gave you the distinction, when you're talking to nominal Muslims, your chances are very good at having some very fruitful conversations with them. Now, when you're dealing with the more uh, radical or hardcore uh, fundamentalist type uh, Muslims, then you got your work cut out for you because these people really take their religion seriously and uh, you have to really get down to the nitty gritty, you might say, to explain everything and be able to defend your own faith at the same time. Because um, from my own experience dealing with hardcore Muslims, they know how to attack the Bible and they know how to attack your faith very well. So uh, you as a Christian need to be prepared. And that's what we're trying to do today in this program. But what we have here on the screen is uh, some archaeological finds from a moon temple. And what you have here is the moon god in pre-Islamic Arabia that were found uh, and this moon god was called Allah and of course if you know anything about uh, pre-Islamic uh, religion particularly in Saudi Arabia where Islam comes from you find out that the Kaaba in Mecca in Saudi Arabia uh, this this uh, cube-like building there before Muhammad the prophet of Islam and by the way he was born in 570 AD and he started having his revelations in 610 uh, A.D. and continued up till about 632 when he uh, apparently was killed by uh, a Jewish as the, uh, the stories go. Uh, but anyway, Muhammad came along and eradicated these 360 idols and gods in the Kaaba in Mecca. It should be stated at this point that the moon god reference is meant only as an early pre-Islamic pagan use of the term Allah but in no way reflects the contemporary usage or meaning of the term Allah by Muslims or others today. In witnessing encounters, Christians should not offend Muslims by insisting that Muslims believe in the moon god, which is simply not the case. A witnessing opportunity can end quickly if a zealous Christian insists that the Muslim believes in something he in fact really does not believe in. In this case, the moon god. Well anyway, I just wanted to explain what you'd be seeing throughout this show. You, from time to time you may see that in the background. That, that'll give you a little uh, information on that. This other thing here is, is a, 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 a publication that we offer, if anyone would be interested in it. it this particular one is put out by uh, Reach Out to the Muslim World. And it's an excellent issue covering Allah, the God of Islam. And inside this publication are many interesting facts. Uh, what is Allah like? A closer look at Allah. It really goes into detail on the Muslim concept of Allah. And if you're interested in this publication, please give us a call at the uh, uh, phone numbers that will come up from time to time on your screen or uh, write us at the address at the end of the program and uh, we'll be glad to send you a copy of this because this will really give you in-depth detail on Allah more than I can give you right now in this, this brief uh, time we have together. Well, with time flying on me, let me uh, give a little background here and then uh, move into some ways to deal with your Muslim friends and other associates uh, so that perhaps you might lead them out of this false religion of Islam and into the true religion of Christianity. Uh, with that said, uh, let me uh, reference a, a few things about uh, Islam. Uh, basically, Islam is comprised on uh, both faith, which is called Imam, I-M-A-M, and practice or duty, which is called din in their uh, 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 spoken language or, or however you want to refer to it, their lingo, let's say. Well, uh, so with, with, the, with the teachings of faith and, and duty, you have what's known as Islamic law. You have Islamic law and uh, you have 
which, uh, which is known as uh, the Sari'a, which is their systematic law. A lot of that's coming from, uh, let's say, their teachings of the Hadith, which are, their, uh, which are many considered to be uh, inspired teachings by a lot of their, their Muslim scholars and so forth. And also the Quran, which is, I have a, have a copy right here, the Quran. This is the uh, translation and commentary by A. Yusuf Ali. And uh, so I have an English translation of the Quran. And in here you find, uh, you know, the Arabic on one side and the English translation here and some commentary down below to help the reader understand in a better way what's going on here. Well, uh, with that said, uh, let me go back then to a, a brief analysis here of uh, Islam just so you have a, just a thumbnail sketch, let's say, and then we'll get into some good witnessing ideas and tips for you, the Christian, to reach out to your Muslim friends. Well, first of all, Islam is built on the five articles of faith. And those five articles of faith are God, and they're great saying, quote, there is no God but Allah, I mean, but God, I should say, there is no God but God, Allah, all-knowing, all-powerful, sovereign, judge, He's, he's not a personal God. He's distinct from his creation. Uh, he, he's the God of judgment, not grace. God of power, not mercy or love. Okay, uh, the next article is angels. Angels here, you have like Gabriel appeared to Muhammad and delivered revelations in Quran to Muhammad. Uh, and uh, there are good angels and there are bad angels. The bad angels are known as jinn, and a lot of these angels live in trees and rocks and tree stumps and things like that, and, and they go about doing evil things. They're sort of like demons in Christian terminology. Well, the next article is Scripture, and uh, their, uh, their Scripture basically comes from, like I said, the Quran, and then, of course, you have their other teachings like the, the Hadiths, and so forth, such as this. You also, they also have something known as like uh, the Psalms of David, which is Zabur, and then also the Injil, which is the Gospel of Jesus, as they call it. Also, you've got something called the uh, Torah of Moses and the uh, uh, Suhuf, which are the books of the prophets. Well, uh, from there you go to the prophets themselves, and it says, uh, and according to what they believe about the prophets, uh, God has spoken through numerous prophets, but the greatest one, uh, the greatest ones are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Muhammad is the last and greatest of these prophets. Okay, and then from there you have their teachings on the last days. And what they say about that is the last day will be a time of resurrection and judgment. Those who follow and obey Muhammad and Allah will go to Islamic heaven called paradise, a place of pleasure. Those who oppose Allah and Muhammad will be tormented in hell. Okay, and of course you have this other concept that kind of overrides everything. It's known as kismet in, in uh, Islamic teachings, and that's more like a, a fatalistic teaching. It, 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 I guess you can't really describe it any other way as being fatalistic. It's just whatever happens is going to happen, and you can't do anything about it because it's the will of Allah. So if Allah wants it this way, that's the way it's going to be, and there's not a thing you can do about it. It's kismet. It's fate. And whatever your fate is, that's the way it is. Okay, with that, we need to mention the five pillars of faith or, yeah, the five pillars of faith. And those pillars are the creed, which is known as Kalima, and quote, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah, end quote. Uh, their next pillar is prayer, known as Salat. Prayer ritual is central. It's five times a day upon rising at noon, at mid-afternoon, after sunset, and before retiring, while facing Mecca. Uh, and you're supposed to recite prescribed prayers uh, and, uh, and so forth, prayers from the Quran. So you, you follow the, the, the prescribed prayers from the Quran when you, when you do these five prayers a day facing Mecca. You're not allowed to face anywhere else but Mecca. Okay, the next uh, pillar of faith would be almsgiving known as zakat. And uh, one-fortieth of income goes to destitute. Okay, and the next pillar of faith is known as fasting. 
And that's usually done at Ramadan, one of the high holy days or, or times of uh, the Muslims. And at Ramadan, which is not just one day, by the way, it's fasting from sunup to sundown during this holy month. So it's a whole month you have to do this, fasting from sunup to sundown. And there's no drink, no food, smoking, sex. You usually eat after sundown when you do eat anything at all to stay alive during this time. But that's a, that's a high holy month for the Muslims, and that's one of the pillars of faith. And, of course, the last pillar is uh, the pilgrimage, known as uh, Hajj, I guess you, the way you pronounce it. I may be badly mispronouncing all these words, but uh, you get the idea. This is the fifth pillar of Islam, which is the pilgrimage you make to Mecca at least once in your lifetime. Once in your lifetime, the pilgrimage to the Kaaba shrine in Mecca is expected at least once by all Muslims in their lifetimes. It involves various other ceremonies and rituals also, much as like uh, uh, throwing stones at the devil that's done during that time and, and so forth. But uh, anyway, Islam is built on those five pillars, those articles we already discussed. And if you do a good job of these things, then and basically you should by all probability, if you're a good Muslim, make it to Muslim paradise. Uh, it's pretty much legalistic and r ritualistic, and if you can just h hang on to these things, then you're, then you're okay. And I mention this just for the Christian, so they get an idea what the Muslim is dealing with as far as their ritual life and, and, and so forth. Now, uh, from there, uh, I need to start talking a little bit with my, my, my time escaping on me here, on uh, when you're witnessing to Muslims, and I've witnessed to a lot of them myself, uh, a key point you're going to run into is the battle between the Bible and the Quran. You've got these two books, both teaching diametrically opposed things. And you as a Christian defender of the faith need to be familiar, of course, first of all, with what your own Bible says. What does the Bible teach about who God is, who Jesus is, what are the essentials of the Christian faith? And know that and know where to find it in your Bible. And then with that done, then when the Quran comes along and starts making all these teachings that go diametrically opposed to what the Scripture says, you'll be ready for it. You'll not only be able to uh, uh, refute what the Muslim says uh, from the Bible and show them where it is, but uh, at the same time you're doing this, you will, you will be getting witnessing seeds, you might say, into the Muslim's uh, mind that he never knew existed before. Maybe uh, down the line, a lot of times the Muslims won't convert right there. And of course, uh, the cost of converting in Islam is very high. If you uh, leave Islam, uh, you know, the Hadith and... And, and the Quran and, and other Muslim teachings, uh, there, there's rules in there where you can be put to death. So it's a dangerous thing for a Muslim to give up his faith. So, but the key is you want to plant seeds of doubt in the Muslim's mind and show them that these books don't go together. The Bible teaches things totally different from the Quran and vice versa. So in a Muslim's mind, a lot of times they're thinking, oh, the Bible was here and now the Quran is the next revelation and the, the, the Quran just simply uh, sharpens up what the Bible already said. And the Bible basically verifies what the Quran says. And Muhammad himself even said, you could go to the Bible and it'll prove the things that he is saying are true. Well, of course, like a lot of good con artists, uh, you know, they, they, they bluff you by saying, well, check me out. Just check it out and you'll find out it's true. Well, uh, obviously, uh, Muhammad, who uh, was basically an illiterate man, never had read the Bible for himself. In fact, in, in Saudi Arabia at the time of Muhammad, the, there wasn't even an Arabic Bible around for anyone to read. That didn't come until two centuries later. And, and so they had to go by what they were told by word of mouth and things. And so Muhammad thought he knew what the Bible said. But boy, what a contrast when you actually see what the Bible says and what the Quran says. And here is the key to witnessing to Muslims. You want to show them a contrast between these two religions. And a way to do it is in a more systematic way. But uh, before we get into a lot of detail on that, let me, let me uh, point out uh, something that you may encounter when, when you do start showing uh, contrast here. And uh, <laughs> just, this is also part of your, uh, your uh, 
witnessing, uh, witnessing, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, training here. What we're about to show you is a clip from the University of Texas campus. I was out there along with two brothers of mine, David Krill and Dale Deloney, and uh, we were out on the West Mall campus there sitting on the steps in the shadow of the big tower there just talking to the students and whoever happened to be coming by. And uh, we started, we were preaching the gospel of Christ, some Muslim students came along, and uh, we got into a little debate, you might say, over uh, basically what's true, the Quran, the Bible, how do you know, and all these types of things. And what I'd like to do at this moment is go to a clip of that particular encounter, let you watch that, take it all in, and then we'll come back here and talk a little bit more about this. But this is kind of a prelude to what uh, possibly could happen. But keep in mind here in this encounter, it was a public event. You know, it was wide open. And that's a lot different than when you're dealing with, uh, let's say, your own personal friend at work or a Muslim acquaintance somewhere where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. It could be a different en encounter. But in, in this case, it was a big public uh, confrontation. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, you know, how you deal with someone is always different when you're dealing with someone in public for a large group of people and when you're on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, witnessing encounter with a, with a friend or, or acquaintance. So with that, let me uh, take you out to the UT campus and let you uh, have a little taste of uh, witnessing to uh, Muslims who aren't exactly uh, wide open to taking in what the Bible has to say. It should be stated here that the listener may be shocked by the aggressive nature of the dialogue that you're about to hear. This happens in public forums, but sometimes a more aggressive way of talking about the contrast between religions has to be done in a public forum simply for the neutral listeners who, unless there's an aggressive uh, assertion of fact before the audience in the face of opposition, the neutral observer may be swayed to the wrong opinion, we might say. So be prepared for a rather aggressive dialogue between the Muslim students and the uh, Christian presenters of the gospel. I would it's like to say that. one thing also before Dale jumps in here. Uh, I've got the Quran right here in my hand and I'm reading out of uh, Surah chapter, or Surah 5 verse 33 and it says, the punishment of those who wage war against God and his apostle, that's Muhammad, and strive uh, with might and main for mischief through the land is, and here's the punishment, execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. That is their disgrace in this world and a heavy punishment is theirs in the hereafter. So according to the Quran, and that's exactly what they do in Saudi Arabia, Sudan. In Sudan they still have slavery of the Dinka tribe. The black people are being sold into slavery in that country. But he, if he was talking about Christian going over there and get punished or you know, getting right. stabbed or whatever, saying, don't, mix book, two, don't mix two points together. Oh. These, these punishments for people who do certain, certain things right. right. I'm just saying it, it tell, in the Quran it says execution, crucifixion, but in Christianity you don't find that at all. The Bible does not say to do that. Read the Old Testament. Read the Old Testament and get educated. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I can, I can answer that I, I, for you. I, I, excuse me. I just want to make a comment. The Old Testament says, "Thou shalt not murder." In the Ten Commandments, Jesus said, "Love your enemy." And and back to that, those Christians that kill. I'll tell you right here how you know if they're a Christian. In First John, chapter two, verse four, it says, "The one who says I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar." and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. If you don't follow this book, the God's word, and it's really 66 books, if you don't follow the word of God and Christ's commandments, you're not a Christian. And, don't, and if you claim to be one and you don't follow the commandments, the Bible itself says you're a liar and the truth is not in you. So that's how you know. Well, wait a minute. Mohammed uh, uh, pillaged caravans. That's not true. It's not? It was a whole uh, war going on. Uh, 
Sir, sir, we could well, spend all day giving you facts to just repeat that. But the thing is, that. if that's the truth, then why is Tom, why is Tom is spreading in this country and everywhere? Anymore? Why is it the fastest one? Because, because man is a rebel, has a rebellious well, heart. I can't, people are stupid. Well, our people are stupid. No, they have a rebellious heart. So that's, I think, very understandable. He could well, attack the caravan that at that time we were in a state of fighting well, with these people. Now, if you tell me he goes out there and fight the people just out of nothing, when he opened Mecca at that time and he goes to people and he said, hey, you are free. I'm not going to even punish you. The same people who kicked him out of Mecca. They said, you go. But we, I do. We, we go. Okay, well, say. Well, the, the, well, we can go over the Quran. The Quran. Uh, we can go through the history anytime you want to. Okay, we Muhammad can. Muhammad is a sinner. It says so in the Quran that he's a sinful man. He did not rise from the dead. Where does it say? Let me know the Quran. You. Please teach me the Quran. Does or does not the Quran say that Muhammad is a sinner? The reference is in the Quran, Surah 40. 55, also Surah 18, verse 110, and also Surah 48, verses 1 and 2. Oh God, let me explain this to you. There are two kinds of sins. Prophets, they don't do major sins. There are certain sins they do, like minor things. Sin is punishable by death. Being, like, probably do, like, say bad words to a person or something, that's a minor sin. No, prophets, because they are much higher than our level, they ask forgiveness for these minor sins. A sin's a sin. The wages of sin is death, and Muhammad, Muhammad died. The wages of sin is death. The punishment of Noah is death because he sinned. The punishment of Moses according to your Bible, which is Quran. Yeah, they're sinners. They had to be saved by grace. They had to die. Yeah, because they're sinners. All the sin and falling short of the glory of God, except for Jesus Christ, because he was sinless, he raised himself from the dead, proven he was sinless. That's what you believe. Oh, well, the Romans were around there, the Jews were around there, the Jews. Oh, no. I'm I mean, I'm nobody's ever done that in the history of the world. The Roman government was there. They had everything to lose if he came out. They wanted law and order and taxes. They couldn't have another cult start, as they called it. Tatticus, Nero's historian, talked about exactly what Jesus... Can I finish? I'm not discussing that. No, can I finish, though, please? Can I finish? He wrote that exactly what Jesus said, go preach the gospel to Samaria, Judea, and the end of the earth. And Tatticus, who is, uh, hated the Christians, wrote, this cult has started in Samaria, Judea, and now it's throughout all the Roman Empire. Exactly what Jesus said. He was no... He didn't like Jesus at all. And that's what he says. There's other uh, secular historians that, that talk about it. Josephus talks about it. Greek philosophers talk I, about it. I would, uh, I, would, I would just add that the Bible is 66 books written by 40 different authors over a 1,500-year period. Three continents. In three continents. It all fits together, and it, it's been archaeologically proved. It has 2,000 fulfilled prophecies. The Koran was written on bones and tree bark by an illiterate man, Muhammad was illiterate, right? No, no, no. He doesn't talk. It's not written by Muhammad. It's by his, the people around okay. him. We agree with okay, that. Okay, about the people yeah, around right. him, but he is the prophet. And it's one, it's one book that is it's, it's ordered from the shortest to the longest in length of surahs. It, is, uh, it is, has no prophecies. And according, to, it has, well, one, uh, Muhammad said, I'll go to Mecca. But that's not nearly what I'm talking about as far as prophecies. But see, the, the thing is, is that... You, you're talking out of ignorance. I mean, no, we're not. You uh, look like a fool. I'm, I'm really sad about you. I mean, don't read a small brochure like that about Islam. And try to, because you make a fool out of yourself here. That's an ad hominem let, attack. Let me tell you something. Let, let attack. Me tell you something. You're yeah. talking about the Bible being one... Hey, what do you think of the uh, Sahith al-Bakari from the Hadith? What? Have you ever heard of the Hadith, the Sahih al-Bakari? Of course, yes. Right, do you have any respect for that? Yes. You do? Yes. Okay, what do you think when uh, Muhammad said in, in the Hadith, he said, Satan stays in the upper part of your nose all night. And the only way to get him out is in the morning you have to suck water up your nose and then spew it out to get Satan out of your nose when you wake up in the morning. Yes. You believe that? It doesn't. Does it okay. Happen. Muhammad also said in Al-Bukhari that uh, Adam was 90 feet tall. 
How big was he? Uh, e? Well, have you seen Adam? Well, Can you tell me it's not true? Well, uh, Can you tell me it's not true? Can you prove it to me right now it's not true? Huh? It was not 90 feet huh? We're descendants of Adam and we're not 90 feet tall. <laughs> Do you, have you ever heard of genetics? You're claiming that we're all the same size since all his now, right? We're claiming there's no 90 feet people. He's like Benny Hinn, that Adam was a super being that flew to the moon. You know, the thing is, is that Mohammed said he's a prophet. Why is he a prophet? Because Mohammed said he's a prophet. What it's circular reasoning. No. It's not there. It's not documented. It's not there. At it's least not documented. he had one revelation called the Quran, no. which was never changed throughout history. He's had... That's the not Bible. true. The Bible was written well, hundreds of years after Jesus was raised to heaven. But uh, Isaiah prophesied that he would come. Uh, Moses prophesied. We believe in that. We have no doubt. We cannot be eaten if we don't believe in Jesus Christ. But the problem is having so many Bibles. You have more than 400, 500 ones until the, the, the Roman. Well, we. I'd like to say we you're a good go Muslim because but... you're accepting these things I've just told you from the Hadith. Yeah. You also believe this one. It says, The prophet said, I was shown the hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers were women. And then he goes on to say, Oh, women, I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. I can show you the same thing in the Bible. No, you can't. Go ahead. I, I, Go ahead. See, no, no, but see, I don't spend my time just opening the Bible well, and finding okay, mistakes. It. it says in Timothy that... Is this a mistake? Is this a mistake? The Bible says, the Bible says for women to keep quiet. I, and the parents have been so much time. Yeah, but that's, yeah. for, that's for order in the order. church. But he says there is no difference between... Can I speak, sir? You know, just finding, you know, things that... You can flip that people and show them, hey, Muhammad's not good, you know. Right. Yeah, okay, well, can I speak? I, I've heard you. Can I speak? Hey, oh, look, no, you see, that's what Jesus You asked a question, and I wanted to answer it. Can I speak, please? Okay. Uh, Paul said he, he didn't allow a woman to teach a man because of order in the church. He didn't say that she was going to hell because her intellect was so low. Never said that. In Christ Jesus, there's no slave, no freeman, no woman, no man. All are equal. Jesus raised the quality of women more than anybody else. Well, uh, how do you like that for some fireworks? Uh, it can get pretty interesting when you're dealing with your Muslim friends. Now, of course, keep in mind this was a public forum. And so things get a little more excited out there. Hopefully it won't get that way when you're dealing with your personal friends, but uh, hopefully these, this kind of training will give you a little idea what could possible, possibly be encountered. Keep in mind the Christian evangelist needs to gauge how strongly committed the Muslim person that's being witnessed to is. If they're not very committed to Islam, then the conversations can be much more pleasant. But on the other hand, if they're strongly committed to Islam, then encounters such as the one you just heard can be a very real possibility. Now with that, uh, let's go into a little bit more film footage and check out another situation where uh, we're debating with the Muslims out there at UT on uh, the subject of Allah, the name of Allah compared to the Christian God, the Trinity, the you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, with that, let's roll the tape. No. Ask any, any Arab Christian or any Jewish Arab and ask him, what's, hey, 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 what's the name of your God? He will tell you his, his name is Allah. What? Yes, it's just a translation. It's just a translation. Ask, ask, God, and God is Allah. Wait, 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 what's God, my friend? Let's answer that, okay? And then I'll let you, let me answer that and I'll let you respond. Okay? Uh, according to the Bible, uh, God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus That's Christ was God. No, no, it's in the scriptures. No, it's not. Yes, now, Jesus, you're God. Now, Jesus you're never God. said, I'm the Son of God. He is a mono, yes, he did. You have a monotheistic God and, and not a God that died for the sins of his yes. people. We believe in one God. We don't believe in three gods. We don't either. We're forgiven. We're, we don't believe in it either. We believe in one God revealed in three persons. You deny the resurrection. You deny the crucifixion. Wait a minute. Jesus can exist at the same time when God exists and the Holy Spirit exists, right or wrong? One in nature and essence. Each can exist on his own, right? In person, they are. Yes. In one in nature, there is one God. At the same time, there are three different, different gods. Just because you can't comprehend it doesn't three mean that it's not personalities true. Three different personalities in the same... Okay. Can I finish? You won't... You won't. Just because you can't comprehend what Islam says doesn't mean... Well, that's, that's a good here, point. Let me, let me see. The well, thing well, is, it's called, in the Greek, homoousios. The same substance. 
The same substance. Same substance. Nature in essence. Muhammad but not explain why you have three gods. It's, Muhammad it's said a mystery. That Your God is a God. finite God. You can explain him. Mine's an infinite <laughs> God. You can't explain him. That's what you think. Uh, okay, well, we want to give other people a chance to talk, but we could go round and round on this. You obviously believe your religion, and uh, at some time, if, if you would all like to, if you'd like to do a debate with us sometime on a, in a studio, where we could just talk about this subject, we would be happy to do that. We have so many debates. You can go and check them all. I know. But um, thanks to God. All these debates are helping with the spread of the truth. But I, I just want the point to get across that there's only one true God, and, and, and I say that the evidence falls for, for the God of the Bible and God of Christianity, and I believe Allah is a false God. But don't lie, and don't say Allah is a false God, because that's... Well, there can be only one true God, and they're not the same. So somebody's wrong. You say you are, I say I am. No, wait a minute. My point, you never answered that. I said, if you call an Arab Christian or an Arab Jew and ask him, what's your God's name? He would say Allah, and he wouldn't know any other name but that. It, it wouldn't be a triune God. I'm talking about the qualities of the God are different. You can, you can call him anything you want. But God says, I have these certain qualities, I have revealed them through my word, uh -huh. and Allah does not have the same qualities. What? Well, according to what you changed, Allah doesn't have any qualities. Okay, according to the Quran, heaven is an orgy with sex with women and wine. Who said that? Oh, what's the the Quran. You want to, want to Here, show let me, you that? Let me give him a reference. It's in the Al-Bakari, Al Hadith. Hadith number six, number uh, it's volume number six, uh, number 402, and it says, The statement of Allah, beautiful women restrained in pavilions. Allah's apostle said, In paradise there is a pavilion made of a single hollow pearl, 60 miles wide. In each corner there are wives who will not see those in the other corners, and the believers will visit and enjoy them. That's, that's out of the Hadith. That's volume six. Uh, it's out of the Hadith. It's a uh, That's a false translation. Okay, so the Meccan scholars who verified it are wrong in their false prophets. Okay. Okay, okay. I hope the Meccan scholars understand. And also, Prophet Muhammad came down in the 5th century, not the 7th. Oh, by the way, the Bible predates. Oh, by the way, the Bible predates the Quran by 600 years. religion went out in the 7th century, killing Jews and it's verified by manuscript going all the way back to the first century. Well, let's see one at a time. Uh, said that Christians believe in three gods: the Father, the Mother, and the Son. And the Son was not crucified. That's what the Quran says. Muhammad didn't even understand what Christians believe about God. He said they believe in three gods, but it was the, the Father, the Mother, and the Son. Christians don't believe in the Mother God. Uh, Muhammad got it wrong in the Quran. What? And in the Quran... Man, Quran? but define me Christians. You have so many sects of... I mean, in my country, we have more than 1,800 sects of Christianity. Now, Which wait. one is the truth? Muhammad Here in this country, you have Quran. David Quraysh. Now, wait a minute. Muhammad said in the Quran... Muhammad said in the Quran, Surah 3, The one that says Jesus Christ is not God Everybody is a liar. Says Everybody says Jesus Christ is God. David Quraysh says, I am God, whom to believe. You know them by their fruits. Go and check your own. You know them by their fruits. Yes. And his fruits show that he is of the devil. You know them by their fruits. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna tell me what the Quran says. You're gonna kill me, you're gonna you're gonna crucify me because I'm telling you what your own book says. Uh, I've been reading straight quotes from your hadith and your Quran all day here. Another thing is, another thing is that uh no no no. Uh, we take the mic. I have to give everybody the mic then. No, you have unethical people like you are ashamed to invert like this. Now we've got, we've, no di we've dialogued no with you. No doubt Christianity is, is facing the hardest time on earth now. No, no doubt people who are atheists are taking over because you have unethical people taking religious stand. This is a shame, a university like that. I'm ashamed to call you people of God. Well, at this least we don't. You You're not the yeah. final judge. At least we don't convert by the sword. Yeah, well, at least we don't kill people. Wait. Oh, let's deny it. Let, let's deny it. I know, you don't convert by the sword? You don't even know your own history. But anyway, let's go on. Well, you can say anything you want, but you can't back it up. Back up what? Why don't you tell me why Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible? He wasn't. He was. Where? The Holy Spirit? Where? The Holy Spirit is not Muhammad. You can't. It's, it's, show me. 
Muhammad was in the Bible, in the Hebrew. Muhammad is. I tell you that the Bible was written before Muhammad even was born. That's right. Uh -huh. that, that was a, it was a prophecy. No, but the prophecies of the Bible. The prophecy no. they're talking about is Jesus said another one will come. That's right. And that's and that's ta okay. Let me finish, please. Can I? He was talking about the Holy Spirit, and he said he will only speak of me, Jesus. In the Hebrew, yeah. if you know Hebrew, Muhammad M. Muhammad M. It was translated as the praised one. It was written in Greek. The New Testament's written in Greek, sir. No, it was Hebrew. Muhammad M. I can show it to you. Give me your draft authentic. That's right. You can send it, but... But, you will, but, but I, you will deny it because everyone... No, no, we won't. I just, you are not open-minded. Here's the address. Yeah. Here's the address. Yeah. address. Yeah. If you want to write yeah, it. This has our address. The New Testament, write sir, is written in Greek. We have a, uh, any more it's questions from the Greek. audience? We're on for another half an hour. And the New uh, Testament just raise your hand manuscripts if you like are in Greek. Who knows what it was written in? It was translated in a million kinjits. Well, oh, that's an okay. oxymoron. Right, let's, Who let's knows what it is? You use, use it as a, a prophecy, and you don't know what it is. Okay, okay we yes, got sir. a question right there. We can, we can get into a lot of different things about the different religions, but when saying I'm, a, an is, a, uh, I'm an Islam or a Muslim, and I believe in Jesus, how do we reconcile not believing what Jesus himself said, because if he's a prophet and we don't believe what he said, then either we're wrong or he's a liar and not a prophet. That's right. That's really where it all comes down. Or the, the point made was that if the Muslim says he believes in Jesus, but he but he is a, has different qualities and did different things than, uh, than the Jesus of the Bible and Jesus of Christianity, for instance, was not crucified, did not raise from the dead, is not God in the flesh, then how can you have it, you can't have it both ways. Is that your point? Yeah, I mean, that's really what we got to get down to here. We don't have to get down to the difference between the books. The man proved himself in his miracles, and we either have to reject what he said or believe him, but we can't believe him and reject what he said. Good point. That's, and the point I like to make is they got so upset when Larry read something that they called blasphemous, but the Quran and even on their Dome of the Rock said, uh, Allah will not have a son. He will never have a son, which is blasphemous to me as a Christian, but you don't care about that. All right, there you have another encounter where you have the classic contrast between the Christian concept of God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, versus the Muslim concept of God, the monotheistic concept of Allah. And as you saw in that encounter there, there's a drastic difference here between these two religions. You can't just say every religion is true and they all teach the same things. They teach drastically different things. And Is Islam is completely foreign religion to Christianity. So never make that mistake. As the tape debate just heard clearly demonstrates, the Muslims have various apologetic tools that they use to try to substantiate their point. The listener heard that the Muslims were arguing that the New Testament, they're basically quoting out of John in the references to the Comforter and the Holy Spirit being Muhammad, uh, as being in the Hebrew, uh, obviously their apologetic it leaves much to be desired when one goes to the actual text. But the Christian apologist must be ready when the Muslims come up with their arguments that obviously to the Christian would seem quite silly but to the Muslim they're quite serious so these arguments regardless of their validity must be dealt with by the Christian in a, in a serious manner to allay the Muslims arguments and then move on as he pr tries to present the gospel to him. Now, even talking about that, you get to the contrast of uh, even who Jesus is. And uh, the, the Muslim Jesus is a completely different Jesus than the Christian Jesus. It even says in 2 Corinthians, I believe in chapter 11, if my memory serves me correct, there's another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. And the Muslims definitely, ha definitely have another Jesus. They don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God because the Quran teaches that Allah has no sons. And, has, and, and, and Jesus is definitely not his son, and that's why they fight it so much. Uh, and that all ties in with their denial of the Christian concept of the Trinity. But with that said, let's go to this next clip that deals with this particular topic of who is Jesus. We say you can have that belief, but I'm going to place my trust in Jesus who was not 
that had any sin. He was sinless and he died for my sin. I'm going to place my trust in him. His blood washes away my sin. Why does it have to be so complicated? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not going to stand in the pr presence of the Holy God in my sin. I'm going to stand in the presence of the Holy God in the blood of Jesus. You can wait for Judgment Day. God punishes sin because we rebelled. And I'm going to stand with Jesus Christ. See, that's another difference between the two religions. In we have Islam, forgiveness you ask in this forgiveness, world. Like you're saying, but in Christianity, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our faith in Him is what saves us. Islam does not put their trust in Jesus Christ as God. Do you believe that Jesus is Allah and the Son of God? We believe He's the Son of God. He rose from the dead, Jesus proving He was God. God. Now, now, what about yes. Louis Farrakhan and the black Muslims? Hey, do you hey. accept them? Do you accept the black Muslims? No, To answer your hey, Larry, let me answer this question. Hey. Okay. To hey. answer your question on is Jesus God and the Son of God, in the Hebrew character, the Son of God means nature and essence, just like Son of the Prophets. The Son of the Prophets was, were not literal sons of the prophets, they're of the nature and essence of the prophets. So the, the Hebrew character means in nature and essence he is the Son of God. He's God he's God manifested in the flesh. Okay, so At this point, the Muslim students became so incensed that one of the Muslim student leaders actually came up the steps and took the microphone from the hands of the Christians, leaving their own microphone, which was down below the steps, and insisted that the Bible does not say that Jesus is the Son of God. First of all, I would say, if Jesus was the Son of God as they say, I would expect him to say about that, and he is their own gospel as Jesus. He mentioned about loving our neighbors, not loving our parents, so many times. What you're saying, show me the Bible, what you're saying, show me. Get the Bible, show me what you're saying, you reveal. No, that's exactly what you're asking. You show it to me. Well, they do it. If he is the Son of God, I would expect him to talk about it at least. It says in John, he says, why, why do you want to stone me since I say I'm the son of God? It says right in here. I can find it for you real quick. God is Christ, the Jews, and the children of God. So let's take them all as our gods too, because so many children of God. That's illogical. Right you, these, these, are, they this, this is Jesus' words. Do you say to him whom the Father sanctified and said into the world, you are blaspheming what you say because I said, I am the Son of God. Okay, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's a, yeah. Thank you're a liar. You. Of course, here the Muslim student gambled on the fact that the Bible said nowhere that Jesus was the Son of God. Of course, in the reference you just heard, David gave the reference from John chapter 10 verse 36 that even Jesus said that he was the son of God. There are many numerous other references and, that were given during this exchange which left the Muslim student embarrassed to where he handed back the microphone and left the steps. But as most good Christian evangelists should know, when Jesus asked the question in Matthew chapter 16, in verse 13, he said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Of course, Simon Peter gave the correct response. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And of course, Jesus commended, him, commended Simon for saying that and said, Flesh and blood is not revealed as to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed it to him. That's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 and following. There's numerous references because the Muslims are so fond of quoting John, particularly the references to the Comforter in John 14 and John chapter 16. Uh, uh, quotations from John are, are particularly effective, particularly in John chapter 1, verse 34. 
where John talks about the record that this is the Son of God. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 49, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 18, name of the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 3, verse 36, he that believeth on the Son hath life, and he that believeth not the Son does not have life. Uh, going on to John chapter 11, verse 27, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, uh, which is a parallel passage to the one just quoted in Matthew chapter 16. And of course, uh, at the end of John, he mentions that all this is written in John chapter 20, verse 31. Uh, basically, uh, he says, going to uh, verse 30, I'll just quote this passage and go on down the page. Jesus did many other signs also in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. So these passages are very effective, particularly in this encounter you have been listening to, because the Muslims were absolutely sure that the Bible says nowhere that Jesus is in, that Jesus is the Son of God, which of course directly contradicts the Quran. Okay, well, so far you've seen some, uh, I think, action-packed uh, scenes here from a public encounter uh, dealing with some of the contrasts between Islam and Christianity. And you can see uh, there are great, great differences. Now, with that established, let me uh, now take a few minutes here to try to help uh, my Christian brothers and sisters in their encounters with the Muslims, whoever they may be, wherever they may be, that perhaps you might be able to share your faith in, in an effective way. Now let me uh, preface this with uh, my own personal experience once. I was down at, out at UT one time uh, working on, at a Christian book table there, uh, and uh, the Muslims came up and we got talking and everything, and they invited me over to their, to their apartment one Sunday afternoon. Uh, so a friend of mine and, and me, we went over there, uh, and there was about eight Muslims from Algeria there, uh, men and women, and uh, we, we spent maybe three hours at their, at their place, and we had a wonderful time. The whole, but I will stress the point, though, that these Muslim students from, from Algeria were those nominal types. <laughs> Uh, they, they barely knew their own Quran, let alone anything about the Christianity. So actually it was three hours of time for me and my friend to really witness for Christ and share a whole lot of things with them. And it was a wonderful experience. And uh, they invited us back again for uh, further discussions. And so I, I will uh, uh, say that, that that was a wonderful opportunity. And you can show contrasts and differences between religion without you know, people wanting to you know, bang you over the head with something. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Now let's talk about some of the contrasts and, and differences here as, as, as time flies. I would like to mention here, and we'll bring up charts on, the, on the, the board that you can hopefully either videotape this off your television set or write these down with some pencil and, and paper that may be available for your further study after this show is over with. So on this first point, let me mention now, uh, take notes, this is your, this is your, uh, this is your homework assignment here. Uh, the, first, the first point is uh, the, the Quran teaches that Christ is not the Son of God. You find that in Surah 3, 45 through 47 in the Quran, also uh, Surah 4, 71. And uh, as a Christian defender of the faith, you defend against that with verses out of the Bible such as John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.14, John 1.34, John 10.30, 1 uh, John 4.10 cross-referenced with John 3.16 through 18, 1 John 5.10, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 17, Mark 14, verses 61 through 65, and then you go to John chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, John 19, 6 through 7. And uh, there are just numerous verses in the Bible that, that plainly tell you who Jesus is. He's the Son of God, something Muslims adamantly deny. So keep that in mind, write that down, and, and, and be ready. Next, uh, next situation is that uh, Jesus Christ is not... God, only a messenger. And that's in Surah 43, 59. Also in Surah 19, verses 29 through 34. Uh, you can refute that with uh, Matthew 17, 5, Colossians 
2, uh, 9, uh, Romans 9, 5, once again, John 1, 1, and many, many verses. Contact our ministry. We can give you a whole list of scriptures that show that Jesus is God Almighty, God in the flesh, uh, without a doubt. But uh, w let me go on. They say that uh, Jesus was not crucified. That's in Surah 4, 17, uh, Surah 4 157. That's easily refuted from Matthew uh, 20, verses 17 through 19, uh, Matthew 27, verse 31, Mark 15, 13, 14, verse 20 and 27, Luke 23, 21, and numerous other verses. Once again, contact us for more information on this subject. Uh, I could go on and on here. Uh, let us, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, lack of time, we'll run in quick succession uh, several charts on your screen. You'll see them, and I'll mention them briefly, but not go into all the references. But you'll see the references on your screen. You'll see differences such as Jesus did not raise from the dead physically. You see it there. You'll see a denial of the Trinity. And there's the verses there to refute that. You'll see a denial of salvation by grace and the nature of man's depravity. Uh, you'll see a denial of the Holy Spirit. They, they say that God is not referred to as the Father. They say you cannot see God or personally know Him. There's the verses to refute it. Uh, they say the Bible is corrupt and untrustworthy, and uh, so forth. But uh, with that said, let me mention, uh, let's go back now to the encounter at YouTube. And look at this witnessing uh, opportunity with this Muslim girl who was asking some questions. Right. How about, okay, how about if God is, is I, I don't, I really don't care about the specific details of what God looks like to you guys. It's Jesus Christ, or to me, it's Allah, or whatever. What I'm saying is, if most of the religions, they really don't, don't uh, cancel each other out. All they do is they say, be good to each other, don't kill, don't rape, don't do this, don't do that. I mean, no, as far as, as, as long as you do this, it really doesn't matter what you believe in food. You should really, if there's heaven, you should go to heaven. The comment is that, that we're all, uh, all the religions believe you be good and you'll make it to heaven, doing good works. Let However, me, the Bible is, is clear. Um, well, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to jump in on that. Uh, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well in John chapter 4 in the Gospels. And uh, she mentioned she was a Samaritan woman, and Jews back then didn't have any, many dealings with them because they were of different religions, and they didn't get along very well. But Jesus talked to her even though she was of a different religion. And uh, here's the way he handled a person of a different religion in John chapter 4, verses 20 and following. Uh, the, the woman at the well says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So she's saying there's two different places there they've got for uh, where they want to worship God. And then Jesus said, Answer, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye not know, ye, uh, ye worship, ye know not what. We know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So right away he tells her, you don't even know what you're worshiping. There's going to be a day and hour coming someday when it's all going to change. But right now, you, don't, you people, the Samaritans don't even know what you're worshiping. But we know that the salvation is of the Jews, not the Samaritans. He tells her right up front at the well that... Y'all got it all wrong. This is the way it is. And as you go on through the Gospels, Jesus gets in it with the scribes and the Pharisees. You know those murderous battles and debates sort of like what we've had out here. Uh, but uh, see, the key is Jesus Christ represents truth. And God has a truth. And you can't just make God anything you want him to be. And that's why Jesus, they, that's why they killed him in the end. He was crucified because he wouldn't go along with their concept of who God was. He told them to their face, you hypocrites, you snakes, you do everything. You, you need to worship the one and true God instead of these gods okay, that you make up. Jesus came in and said, this is the true God. Jews, you prove what you believe in. I'm here to complete it. This is the complete, this is the true God. Listen to me. Yeah, he, t he told the Jews now they must believe in him. Him in Jesus, Jesus Christ. He told, that's why they wanted to kill him because he kept saying he was God and the scribes didn't want to believe he was God. And he said, you've heard the blasphemy and then what say ye? And of course they all wanted to kill him. Right. right. How about, okay, now look at it from this point of view. Jesus came in and said, look, Jews, you were here. I have more information. This is the way it's supposed to be. Muhammad came afterwards. This is just like going to university from one grade to the other. 
Well, Jesus said all that come after him are thieves and robbers, and that they're all false prophets. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said there'll be many coming well, after me, and they're liars and deceivers. Right, but how, how we talk about, how Moses talk about it, it's, it's the prophets that have books. And the prophets that, those, those people, I don't, I'm not going to get into the fact that Jesus was a prophet or wasn't a prophet or was all about or whatever. What I'm, what I'm talking about is whoever came in the book, we respect, okay? There are false religions. There are there are perversions of truth. Uh, you would say like Islam is not the same as Black Islam. Okay, so there's perversion in Christianity. There's perversion in in Islam. There's perversion. And there's all sorts of religions. They can't all be right. You say maybe a higher revelation came later, but Jesus Christ was God. He said he was God and he was God. Now you don't get any more information than God has. Okay, and Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father." Father except by me and in Acts it says there's no salvation in no one else there's no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved only Jesus now the reason that is you're you're forgetting the sin problem we all are sinners and we're all destined for God's judgment but God loved the world he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him trust in him shall be saved okay now if, if there was other ways to be saved, if other people are true, and Jesus warned of a broad road to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to life, so there'll be many false prophets, there'll be, you'll know them by their fruit, there'll be many false Christs. He said this, that there, there is a deceiver on the planet, and he has counterfeit religions and false truth. So it's got to line up with the Word of God, or it's not true. Now, if, he, if there's another way to heaven... Uh, the, then Jesus Christ well, didn't Jesus need to die, it. and he was a liar. He said it himself, and I'll let you talk. Just let me get this point in real quick. In uh, Mark chapter 14, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Shortly before he's being betrayed into the hands of sinners and crucified, he, see, he prays three times to the Father. He said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. He said, if there's any other way we can, you know, the Lord, that we can accomplish the salvation for man, let it be done because, uh, you know, this is a terrible cup of death of crucifixion and everything, but that was the only way, and he went through with the death. Okay, and I believe in Jesus. Who was Jesus' father? God was Jesus' father, right? We're talking about father here. Can I believe, can I believe it's father, not in the son? Jesus said, I am the father of one who denies the son, denies the father. Well, it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, he who denies that Jesus is the Christ and also that he is the son has neither the father or the son. And that's in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus was totally human, 100% human, 100% God. He had two natures, not confused, not mixed, not diverse. That's it. But I'm saying is that he emptied himself. He not counted it to be equal with God. He emptied himself, becoming a form of a servant so he could pay our sin debt. See, people have a finite God that they want to believe in, that all of a sudden uh, he's just going to say, oh, I forgive you for rebelling against me just because you've done some good deeds. The thing is, is that uh, when you drive down the road and do the speed limit, they don't stop you, but they stop you when you break the law and you're, took, you're brought to court, and there's a punishment for that. And God said the punishment for sin is death, physical death, showing all of us that something's wrong with this universe. We all die. The second thing is spiritual death, and that's cast into a devil's hell for eternity because you rejected eternal God. And you go back to uh, the Ten Commandments. The first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me because he's a jealous this guy's God. Got a well, uh, that was an excellent opportunity with that girl who, who had some uh, very open questions. With that, I'd like to say that the Quran definitely teaches that you can, you can look to the Bible to confirm the Islamic teachings. You'll find that in uh, uh, Surah 5, 47 through 51, and also uh, uh, verse 68, and also Surah 4, 136, talk about using the Bible to uh, prove Islamic teachings. But the funny thing is, the minute you do that, you find that they're totally different. Well, my time's over with. I have to go. We'll be back next week to continue in this series. Please join us. I'm Larry Wessels for Christian Answers. God bless you all. And remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through Him.
check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 